Welcome back at Adobe Dive. It's a wonderful Monday and you are here. <laughs> What's the <laughs> What's the funniness? We're streaming live from the studio today. We're in Munich and we're here in person and I'm really, really happy to have my lovely friend Karina joining me today. Hi Karina. Hello, I'm super excited. <laughs> I'm Eleni, I'm hosting this <laughs> session today, and this is nuts already. We did not even do this for two minutes, but um, it's... I need to get back on track now. This is a festive stream and a collaborative one, which starts today and which will be followed tomorrow. Um, I'm completely off. Today we are doing <laughs> illustration. Tomorrow we will do animation. It's a collaborative stream. You are here today. Tomorrow we'll be joined by Robert Ranitsky. And um, on Wednesday, Tim will do a crash course with infinity loops. Um, but going back on track, hello everyone in the chat. It's so great to see you. Um, you're here at Adobe Live. I'm Melanie. And um, we have one and a half hours where we will focus on... Illustration. And in Adobe Fresco. Yeah, in Adobe Fresco. And I will show you my favorite brushes and how to use them. And we will have a closer look at the latest fall brushes and winter brushes. I will show you how you can get them and how to customize them and use them for your festive illustration project. Exactly, that's the topic for today. Um, it's festive greeting cards. Um, today illustrated, tomorrow animated, and um, I had exactly. a really nice intro prepared for this, but since we're in the studio and everyone is laughing here, I'm completely off. Um, hello in the chat again. Hello, Anna. Good to see you again. Andreas is here too. There are a couple of people who uh, joined us before already. It's so nice. I love it. It but feels it's like family. It is, it is. <laughs> but there are a lot of new ones too. There's Oliver. Hey, Sandrine. Sean, good to see you. Um, it's lovely to have everyone here. Jack is here. Oh my god, the chat is full. Michelle, what? Uh -huh. It's full so house? great to see everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Karina. Yes, Melanie. What's, what's the first step in your first illustration process? Um, like you said before, uh, it will be a collaborative stream. So I will start with some illustration and Robert will animate it tomorrow and I'm super excited. So we 
decided to go for a nice illustrated greeting card <laughs> from Adobe Life. So it will be a mixture between some festive elements and fun hand illustrated um, typography, also some uh, tools from the Fresco toolbar and yeah, we'll uh, mix it all together and see what Robert will create tomorrow then. <laughs> so I'm just responsible for the illustration part. So yeah, um, like you mentioned before, we had the stream already in German um, one hour ago, two hours ago. About an hour yeah. ago, yeah. Something like that. So we started, so I just um, duplicated the document. So I will start from scratch again um, or start with my sketch. So the first step will be to um, set some or make a decision about the color palette. <laughs> so as you might know, I like uh, very bold and, and bright colors. So the festive yeah, theme is not... It's not your thing. No. You love, to, it's you love all the colors. <laughs> Just green, gold and a bit of red would not do for you. Uh -uh. You need more. Mm -hmm. I need super bright colors and I love to add some energetic movements and yeah, so we'll, we will see in the end, uh, it will turn out a little bit different than what people might expect, expect from a festive stream. Um, but it will be fun. So let's start let's right start. away. You have a couple of, um, you had a couple of colors there. Yep. How did you find those color swatches? Um, I take a lot of inspiration for my color palettes from yeah, daily life and I love to use a uh, capture mm -hmm. to um, make my own palettes and to load it into my libraries. So as you can see, I have a lot of them <laughs> <laughs> and of course it makes sense, um, especially I, I want to show this one because I recently made um, a library for skin tones because that's something I feel is very difficult to find the right tone. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense to create some libraries for yourself. And in this case, I... What was this one? The inspiration one. It's also the one with the most um, colors in there. So, yeah, I decided to go for the first one. You can see the blue uh, spot here. So to add some, yeah, purple, um, also orange and yellow for some golden touches. And we will also add some green and um, very deep and dark blues and yeah, some reds in the end. Sounds exciting. Sounds like you yeah. will combine all the colors that exist in your All of them. <laughs> And if there's someone who can do this, then it's you, because <laughs> you managed to combine all the colors in your artworks. We will see. Um, when you start working on an illustration that is going to be animated in the end, it's very um, clever to create a lot of layers and also to put them into separate folders. So we will see uh, during the process, process how easy this works, but... That's really one thing that you always have to keep in mind. Layers, layers, layers. Layers, layers, layers. <laughs> <laughs> so we will start with some background color. Um, so I will just use the pink one. And then we will also have a look at the latest um, brushes. If you want to check out the latest brush collections, you just have to click um, on the pixel brushes and then scroll down until you find add brushes and then discover new brushes. And there you can find the whole set. It's like a toolbox. It has lots of libraries for different brushes. Mm -hmm. um, they vary from very analog techniques to motif brushes, so it's you, pretty much anything you look for, you will find there. Yeah, and it's super nice because um, they have this 
themed collections already so it's nice to use them and you can just add them or remove them and once you edit them you'll find them right away in your library brushes so in this case um, we will have a closer look at the fall brushes today because i really like them there are so many kind of analog brushes in there and they're the most recent library that was released, so yeah. we will get a first uh, glimpse on how to use them today. Exactly. And within the brush settings, you can also try them right away. I will choose a different color now. So you can always go and try them right away. So this one is a very nice one. Um, it almost feels like drawing with some felt tip marker and I really like it. Was this your discovery of this brush library? The Your favorite new brush? Yeah, I also saved this one to my favorites. Right Which is away. a good hint because yeah. for everyone who's new in Fresco, please go ahead, I don't, the stage is yours today. No. So. Um, you can also add your favorite brushes into your favorites library. So you can mix different libraries or different brushes and add them right away into your favorites. So it's this little star icon. Um, and once you click it, you will find them in your saved favorites. So in this case, in my case, there are a lot of um, halftone brushes because I really love to use them for backgrounds. And when you're not sure um, how this brush will look like, you can always go and try them within the brush settings. Perfect. Um, you showed this before uh, that you can try the brushes up here, uh, which is a... I see, I'm <laughs> doing this because it's so lovely to have you sitting next to me in the studio. Um, still surprised that this works so well. Um, yeah, you can see a preview of all the brushes there and all the editing options, which is really cool. Yeah, you can also customize um, existing brushes, so you can instantly see in this tiny little window um, how your settings change the brush. Yeah. There's a question in the chat, which is, can you even have a favorite brush in Fresco? Because well, there are quite a lot of them. Yeah, there are really a lot of them. It's hard to, to make a decision to... Yeah, just for one brush. <laughs> is there just one brush, which is... I have my absolute favorite brush. <laughs> the, the, which I, one is it? It's... Um, Pastel Mixer. Yes, forever. <gasps> I knew Pastel it. Pastel Mixer forever. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's also one of my favorites. Um, it's a great brush. Yeah, I, th I think there are uh, 10 live streams where I'm just talking about this, uh, about this brush. But all the mixer brushes are cool. I also love the watercolor brushes. Mm -hmm. Um, especially the oil ones, because the texture is so nice. That's true. So anything where you try to imitate analog techniques in a digital way, that's uh, why I love Fresco so much. And I use that for the artworks I do. Yeah. yeah. It's really nice also to combine them. I mean, um, it's great that you can use so many different brushes and tools within um, this one app. I love it. <laughs> it's very true. It's crazy. Okay, Lina, before you start drawing, yeah. don't you want to use the magic, <laughs> magic Christmas brush for your... It's our special Christmas brush. It's just festive greeting cards, so we thought we'd bring in a bit of fun here. Um, you want to give it a try? <laughs> <laughs> it would be so nice, but yeah. <laughs> it's not working. See, if this would be an analog uh, word, we could do this, but no. We're yeah. stuck with this, um, with this brush. Um, for everyone who just joined, because we're now 12 minutes in um, only, in case you're watching on YouTube, hop over to Behance and there we have a look at the chat and, and we have a lot of nice comments there. Um, Sandrine, for example, says her favorite uh, section is the, her favorite section is probably the, the longest list uh, she has in all the mm -hmm. brush settings because she has so many of them, which is the case for me too. Um, I always intend to clean up, but I never do. Um, but the favorite brushes are, well, one of the, the best features I discovered. Yeah, it's so nice that you can 
kind of create your own collection then. It is. But not if it's too long, so yeah. <laughs> you don't find anything anymore. <laughs> so, I will just start drawing, right? No. The stage is yours. Ah, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> You have the pleasure to watch you right next to me today and I have a couple of other streams as streams and screens where I can see whatever you're doing. Um, and for everyone who just joined, um, feel free to drop all your questions in the chat revolving around festive greeting cards, uh, illustration, Karina's career as an illustrator, um, because she's done quite a lot of things this year already, quite a lot of cool projects, ex extensive projects. Um, there's been so much on your list. And now we're here today uh, in this last week of Adobe Live um, for this year. I'm really happy that you you joined us yes. and you, will, you can give us some insights about what you're doing and how you use the brushes and how your year was. Yeah, it was really a, a very intense year, I have to say, but it was um, a great one. Any highlights you would, uh, you would like to share? Um, wow. <laughs> there were so many exciting things. Um, one of my personal highlights was um, my latest project for... Um, I made or I designed a furoshiki. It's um, a traditional Japanese um, wrapping cloth. So... It was very exciting because I loved the idea of creating something um, sustainable. And that's also something I really want to focus more on the next year. Because I think as designers, we are responsible to shape our future. And yeah. also to design uh, something that um, is sustainable and has a purpose. So this was quite interesting. That's a cool aspiration. I also uh, loved, how is it called? Furoshiki. Yeah, furoshiki. <laughs> I keep forgetting the word, but uh, it, lo it looked really, really cool. Um, I saw it on your Instagram profile. Really, really lovely project. Um, and John actually asked a question, which I did not read. I'm super sorry, Sean. I, I missed out on it. And thank you, Sandrine, for, ask, uh, for answering it. Um, Sean asked if you can color layers in, fo uh, in Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> in, in fresco. fresco in photoshop you can do it in fresco you can't unfortunately um but that would be very helpful in this case yep. because if you prepare an illustration for animation which will happen tomorrow um this could be a really nice feature yep this would be nice mm. but maybe that's something that will come to fresco very soon i don't know Let's see, it's something you could maybe um, request mm -hmm. because um, Fresco has a team behind that really listens to uh, the user voice. So that's something everyone can participate in. And this would be maybe one feature more on the list because there are so <laughs> many I can think about which would be uh, which would be also really cool to have rather than maybe the colored layers. And Emma actually just posted your Instagram profile um, with the Furoshiki uh, oh, in the so chat. Nice. So in case you're still on YouTube, hop over to Behance um, and have a look at the chat there. Karina, you're currently uh, lettering yep. in Fresco. Is this something you do very often? Um, not really, but I really... Um, I wish I could do it more often because it's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, but of course, it depends on the job or the project requirements. Um, but I love this uh, handmade analog feeling. Mm -hmm. So it's really nice to have this nice brush and then to um, erase some parts or include or add some parts with the brushes and this one is really great because um, it almost feels like yeah having a real uh, pen 
Would you mind sharing it again? Because Delfina in the chat asks uh, which one it is and she says it has a great texture. Yeah, it really has. And it's called Granulate and it's in the latest fall collection. Already saved to my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> it's your discovery of this uh, library. Uh, Sandrine also uh, posted a really nice chat about how to tie your Fukushiki in the chat in case someone wants to have a look and see all the, the possibilities you have to do you can do with this. What is it actually? How would you? Is it a scarf? I know it's a Fukushiki, but could you say Yeah, you can scarf? use it in so many ways. Um, some people use it as um, kind of wrapping for gifts. Um, in a traditional way, it's also used for some kind of um, wrapping for foods. Mm -hmm. So you can also use them as some kind of bag. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, I think it was when it was invented, they, I don't know when, but it was a very long time ago. Um, it was kind of some replacement or it was before some plastic, pa uh, plastic bags were invented. <laughs> so they really used it for transporting things, for food, for gifts. Yeah. And it's a nice way because you can use it in so many different ways. Yeah. And some, it's a very sustainable solution, mm -hmm. like you mentioned before. You can also use it as some hair band or um, scarf. Some people just use it as some add-on for their handbags. True. So yeah. it's very versatile. Yeah. Definitely something uh, everyone should have. That's true. Hello, everyone who just joined in the chat. It's so good to see you. Karina, since we're we're illustrating a festive greeting card today, and yeah. it's the first step of like a two-day stream, um, and today it's about illustration, tomorrow about animation. Um, do you send cards for Christmas still? I do. Um, I like to design my own and to send it some to some clients to say thank you, or also to my friends and family members. And I love this. Um, self-made approach and also to create something for this uh, special event. <laughs> I unfortunately don't manage this year or I did not manage in the uh, ah, yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah, yeah. past <laughs> two years. But I, I really like receiving Christmas and festive greeting cards. Um, but maybe a question to the chat. Is anyone of you still sending cards, postcards, festive cards um, or letters for Christmas? I can picture, for example, Delfina sending cards. I'm, Delfina was one of our guests in a German stream. Um, so I'm, I can definitely picture you maybe um, sending cards. Maybe Sandrine also. Sean actually says uh, he loves the hand lettering you do. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but I think that um, when it comes to hand lettering, it's really something that you have to get familiar with. Um, because, yeah, it's nice to adjust some letters in the end and also to add some highlights or textures. And I don't like this very static um, brush lettering, which was very popular. It still is, yeah. Oh, really? It is. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'm a bit so, old school, but no, yeah, I think yeah. it is. I don't like it so much. Um, so I prefer the some wonky parts and also some... The simple imperfections. Yeah. I don't have the patience for hand lettering. You know, if you, you because you have to do every stroke really, yeah. really slowly and you have to be really careful, if, especially if you do it um, in an analog way. Mm -hmm. It drives me nuts. I want it to be done and that's it. Um, but <laughs> looping back to the festive cards, um, there are so many people who still send cards. That's so lovely. Oliver sends them, for example. Anna says she's too lazy. <laughs> Anna, it's, it's not an option. Um, Linda sends electronic ones, which is a really cool idea. Yeah. And Sandrine does it too. See? I had, I had, I had a, a good feeling there that Sandrine sends cards. <laughs> but she only sends them to the nice clients and the best clients. Not the others. So in case 
<laughs> you don't get a, a card from him St. Jean for Christmas. Say. You were not a, a nice client. <laughs> uh, but also for, as he also sends them to family and friends. So. Okay. <laughs> and Anna even says she's a Grinch this year. <laughs> I can join you in this. Being here in the studio gives me the first like, Christmas feeling I have this year. Because it's, it's really nicely decorated and with those... So you're, you're moving forward, Karina. What's happening on your yep. screen? Um, I try to make some color sketch for the different um, parts. So, yeah, I'm just um, working my way through the illustration, <laughs> <laughs> so to say. It's like you're telling um, me don't ask so many yeah, questions. No, 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 That's no. what we're here I'm for. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Hello, everyone who's joining the chat. Um, there are always people dropping in. It's good to see you. See, I would ne I would not dare to combine this red with the pink, with this light pink. I don't know why. I'm I, I'm just too black and white, probably. But do you like it? I do. <laughs> I told you. I told you many times before. Whenever you combine colors, it feels like so natural, and I'm yeah. I, I just can't. Yeah, but I admire you for this. Too. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes um, I have to admit. Um, sometimes it makes no sense. So then I have to change the whole sketch. The whole color sketch. The That's a good point. Where do you do that actually? Are you doing this in Photoshop later on or are you st sticking to Fresco for changing the colors? Um, it depends on the project. Sometimes I really um, try to do everything in Fresco. But of course, if you send some printing files, you have to um, do the right color correction also to also to um, add some specific printing profiles. Mm -hmm. It makes sense to make everything in fresco, uh, in Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You just love fresco, we know that. That's true. Yeah, but the, the blend modes could be an option to change color in fresco. Mm -hmm. Or clipping masks. Yeah, clipping masks are a great way. Um, maybe I will use the new brush. For the star. Yes. Let's do it. Oh my god. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Proper brush love here. I mean. <laughs> Sandrine calls her technique of sending cards a uh, passive aggressive card sending. <laughs> I think it's just it's just <laughs> fair to make a proper selection of you send cards to. Oh. Yeah, I will definitely keep that in mind for our next year. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> let's, let, let's see if I get a card. For this wonderful idea. I will wait until the, 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 the until next year <laughs> and see if I get one and receive one from you. If I don't, I will just visit you at the studio <laughs> and pick one up myself. I mean, this brush. It's lovely, but have you ever considered using Illustrator? Because <laughs> especially this artwork would be perfect for Illustrator. And I can see, you know, the, the repeat tool. Yeah, I totally get what you want to <laughs> convince me to, but... <laughs> no. No. Okay. No. I tried. No, no Illustrator for you? No Illustrator for me. My heart belongs to Fresco. Okay. And Photoshop. I don't know why. Um, sometimes I have to use um, Illustrator for specific projects. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, it's giving me a hard time to get into the right mood as okay. well. 
Oh, I'm just making fun. Of course, um, I can use Illustrator and... Um, <laughs> I know. But I prefer <laughs> Fresco. Would this be something for a New Year's resolution? To, to give it another try? Yes. And I will send the first card made in Illustrator to you. <laughs> you promise? Yeah, I promise. It's, it's you know... It's, it's live. It's <laughs> stored forever now on the internet. Oh... Yeah, we can do this. That's a nice, uh, nice project for next year. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's see. I will do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, you're using the the new brushes, the fall brushes, um, for this illustration. Yeah, you found you found your favorite one already. I did, but um, let's have a closer look at some others. Um, I can imagine that this one is also a great one. Let's give it a try. Oh, yeah. It's almost... Oh, this one would be great for uh, some um, backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Because I really love to create um, backgrounds with brushes and um, use the shaping tool and also to... Um, use the rubber to create some kind of almost um, cut out or simple imperfections coming from printing more. <laughs> so I can show you what I mean. So you're trying to imitate analog techniques yep, again exactly. in digital That's what ways. I wanted to say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's just a short version of yeah. it. Um, in this case, I really... I can highly recommend um, the halftone brushes from uh, Kyle T. Webster. Um, he made a very nice collection of halftone brushes, which are really close to yeah, some screen printing um, halftones, because you have to make it. I mean, everyone knows what's, what screen printing is all about and how this works, but this one is really the whole collection is amazing. So whenever I use them, I go really big. Like this. And then I try to uh, transform it. I'm sorry. You know, we live here in the studio. We're streaming live <laughs> from Munich. And it's it's one of those, you know, rare streams where we really get together. And it hardly ever happens, but it's got really cold outside and I have really dry lips today. <laughs> and there's one person here in the studio who is constantly making jokes about my lips. Can I help you? <laughs> I think I'm lost already. So if not, as long as you don't hear it crunchy, in a crunchy way, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's all good. Crunchy lips. Crunchy lips, yeah. <laughs> I can see you over there. <laughs> oh. <sighs> so. Sorry, I distracted no, you completely from this fine. background technique. And everything I know there are fine. people in the chat who really want, love to see and know how, the, how to do backgrounds. Are those backgrounds something you start with usually or is this something? No. Uh, um, this is really something that I tend to do at the very end. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes I really change colors in the end as well. And then I try to implement the right background. So this one, for example, um, is also a very nice brush because... Oh. <laughs> because it has a nice um, structure and if we zoom in it also has these um, simple imperfections because it's not really straight so you can see it's like um, a little bit grainy mm -hmm. and that's super nice <laughs> 
I'm sorry, it's the chat. <laughs> Are you distracted? <laughs> I'm super distracted. I, I, I love what you're doing, but the, the chat is distracting me. <laughs> and then you can easily cut out some parts. I will have another sip of tea, otherwise my my crunchy lips might turn this whole scenery into a Jurassic Park moment. Oh, am I? Oh. My lips are crunchy like a, a dinosaur. <laughs> so, as you can see, this really looks um, very analog. It does. And it's nice. It is, and as you mentioned before, it has this unique touch because you would not be able to reproduce mm -hmm. that just in a way, yeah. So usually that's um, my way of creating some backgrounds and I also tend to um, work or add a lot of shadows. <laughs> Are you trying to stay serious? Like <laughs> no, 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 I'm super serious. <laughs> so... All the halftone brushes are also great for adding some shadows and highlights as well. Mm -hmm. um, you can see this in the, the other way around, background illustration. Um, Which was done by you. That's why you, why you, yeah. you really use those halftones. And you mentioned before that how do you how do you decide where to place a shadow and. Mm. <sighs> Most of the time, it's not the right um, angle yeah. in a, from a technical perspective, but I think it offers so much um, or opens up so much space for interpretation if you just create your own way of adding some shadows. Yeah. So mm -hmm. for my style of illustration, it's a perfect match, <laughs> I would say, but... I can completely um, imagine that a lot of people don't like it when it's not the right way. Yeah. Or they, um, I, I think it's a it's a matter of <laughs> like it, it's a it's a it's Sorry. a matter of an artistic interpretation or yeah. where you try to reproduce your realistic shadows. Yeah. And if someone is really into, for example, three D renderings or placing light um, and renderings, then. They would not appreciate that, but in your exactly. case, it's absolutely yeah. fine to do that. So I think it makes sense to find your own way to create um, or to, yeah, whatever you feel comfortable with, um, go with the flow, I would say. dark. Wow, this is super bright. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the one or the other and then it pans out somewhere in the middle. Mm. Um, since this is a collaboration, how did you how did you proceed with the planning of this project? Mm. Since we wanted to do something fun, something festive and also to um, have the option to show people a lot of different tools and brushes and ways to create something. Um, we ended up doing a nice mixture between some typography, colors, brushes, and also to include some festive elements like a gingerbread mm -hmm. man or um, stars, um, Christmas tree. Yeah, and we had a few calls and also um, Robert told me what he would like to do. And so we ended up doing something that's fun for both of us. It makes sense. Yeah. And Robert, will, Robert is actually here. He's, uh, he's in another room now, <laughs> but he was here before um, and joined us already. Um, and he will do the animation tomorrow, which is, which is a really cool project. And it's just the right time to do it because, well, it's the festive season and having... This greeting card is just a 
just a perfect match for the time. And maybe, um, as mentioned before, sending this in a digital way, maybe as a, a gift or something, would be mm -hmm. really cool. Yeah. I think the same. I think it makes sense to create something that um, can be used afterwards. So this was kind of our personal approach to create something nice yeah. and also festive. Yeah. I could also be a really cool Instagram sticker. That's true. Ah, oh, maybe we can create an Instagram sticker as well. So many ideas. Yeah. Let's write this on our wish list for Robert uh, because th there are many things on this wish list already, and he will just he will have ninety minutes tomorrow to translate your illustration <laughs> into an animation. Um, and Sean just asked if the animation will be in After Effects or Photoshop, and this will be in After Effects, of course, because Robert is an After Effects uh, pro, and he will work with your fresco file as a PSD. Exactly. Did you actually use the, the, the sharing feature or did you export mm. and send it? I think I will export and send it. <laughs> um, because I maybe I will have a second look at the illustration work um, on my laptop mm -hmm. in Photoshop then. Yeah. And also name the layers and, um, <laughs> yeah, I think it's always nice if you work with someone that you um, place everything in the right order and also to make it nice for someone who has to work after you. So, Sandrine, because I know you're very spontaneous with your illustrations, um, Sandrine requests a festive stormtrooper because this would suit um, oh my god Robert really well <laughs> a stormtrooper yeah I have no idea how they look like I need some references I can show you some references okay cool let's see how happy Robert is about <laughs> this idea <laughs> Yeah, Robert is really happy about this because he's a massive Star Wars fan. I have not seen anyone who's such su such a Star Wars fan as Robert is. And he, he he did a fan film just recently. It was released in, I think, in ah, summer. Yeah. Um, I saw this. And there's a stream about him creating this mm -hmm. Star Wars fan film, which is really, really impressive. When I saw the footage for the first time, I was just mind blown because there's so much work, so much effort in this. And the love for detail is insane. So, Robert, um, maybe in case you have time this afternoon, evening, um, have a look at the at the recording of the session because, yeah, it's just amazing. And maybe that's a good hint because everything we stream live here will be stay forever on the hands and YouTube. So all promises you make here will remain <laughs> on the internet forever. Um, and you can rewatch them. Or maybe you can ask Tim, can you maybe post the link to Robert's stream in the chat, please? That would be lovely. He of course said no. I can still see you over there. So you're moving forward with the lettering? Yep, exactly. I'm trying to find a nice colorway. And I will use the same brush um, from the Fall Brushes collection. Mm -hmm. And there it is. Thank you, Tim, for posting the link in the chat. In case you're still watching on YouTube, this is your hint to please have a look at Behance, hop over, because there's the chat there you can ask 
all kinds of questions and you will see um, all the links we share and all the infos you need about Karina as an illustrator because we will link to her Behance page and of course um, you have all other insights, for example, a link to the Discord channel where we chat once those streams end. <laughs> Karina, do you know that there's this joke going on where... <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Which one of the, of the many? Which one? <laughs> yeah, many jokes, yeah. Um, moisturize, moisturize, and we know <laughs> it's not a joke. You know, this is the first and last time. Oh. I will do a stream with crunchy lips. Um, <laughs> um, there's this joke where that I, or there's actually the story that I really, really, really want to have one of these hovering art directors that were produced a decade ago, which are really rare. <laughs> yes, those. They're super rare and really hard to get. And I never got one. And I wanted to have one so much. So one day, one of the hovering art directors that are around here will disappear. <laughs> and I would just take it because I never got one as a present. I will steal it. I tried to steal one at the London office once, but Tim told me to not do so. That's how uh, that's how 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 much I'm craving to own one of those hovering art directors. Maybe that's something for your uh, Christmas uh, wish list. Wish list. Wish list. <laughs> yeah. I will add this. <sighs> Roth is telling me to check my airdrop because he sent me a link to a very nice lip pump. Robert, I saw that already. I don't have any words for this hint. Buy one, get one free. <laughs> this is so mean. I'm suffering here. See, we should change the, the content of this stream. Festive, <laughs> festive, 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 lips. festive presents for Melanie. Crunchy lips with Melanie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How to avoid crunching it. Yeah. And this is so much fun. And we have not even talked about the nose flute yet. <laughs> I love it. Anti crunch recipe. I will do a stream where I'm illustrating lip palm next time. Yeah. I'll join you. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's see. Let's see if. That's something for next year. <laughs> yeah. So, so you're using pretty much all the tools that are available in Fresco, which is cool exactly. for this illustration. Um, you have the shapes now. You just use the ruler, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Um, I think Fresco offers so many. Karina, this is the moment. What happened? <laughs> I love your color combinations, but, but this, this red not... and this, no. I was about to no. change it. No. So, <laughs> color police. It's a no. Please, please. help. Um, now this is too much. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so this works. See the color police are also requesting change. Oh, this looks better. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so much for helping me. <laughs> I saved you. <laughs> Yeah, but maybe we will change the lettering in the middle afterwards. Um, because what I really wanted to show you is how to use more brushes to create um, a nice texture for the gingerbread. Because I think that's something that's very could be very difficult to um, draw cookies because most of them are brown or kind of brown. Yeah. It's all about shading and light when it comes to yeah. so those cookies. Exactly. 
TJ Fina so, so, uh, just wrote in the chat that she loves the colors. Oh, thank you. We saved it. And Yumokon asks how you did the the outline of the of yeah. the shape. That's the nice thing about the shaping tools. Um, you can change between um, having an outline or filling the actual shape. So I can show it on a separate layer. So in this case, um, if I want to fill the shape, um, I just click on the, on the shape I made and Fresco will ask me what I want to do or what I want to, how to, I would like to proceed. So I can choose between vector or pixel <laughs> um, because I created a new layer and it's empty. So I have to make a decision first. In this case, I will just go for the pixel. Um, then it's a simple blue shape. If I want to have a red outline, for example, I, I use the red <laughs> just for <laughs> demonstration purposes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then I will click on this small icon here. You can see the blue wobble, right? Yeah. So, um, or I will use pink instead. And then I can draw um, some outline. It's also very nice. I can also, um, as you can see, now it's just the outline. You can also, if you want to have just half of it or just a part of the shape, you can also draw just on some parts. Like for example, this. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. I think it's not so obvious that you can switch between filling and outlining shapes. Yeah. Um, but once you have it and really know how to do it, it's it's very easy. Yeah, and it's a nice way to create um, different shapes and also to combine them. And they all have the texture brushes which you used, which is cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can also do this uh, with vector brushes. So true. Yeah. Depends. So I will just delete this. So, um, let's go ahead with the gingerbread man, for example. Now it's time for brown. <laughs> I was about to ask, would you, since this is your own interpretation of a gingerbread cookie, would you maybe also like select very sh like different colors than how they are in, in real life? For example, can you picture a red gingerbread? Mm. Hmm. Good question. I mean, you can always add some um, sugar glazing on it. So I think in this case, I will stick to the real gingerbread color. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's your, uh, it's your, it, you, you're the illustrator here. You can interpret this however you'd like to. Would you eat red gingerbread? <laughs> Why not? If it tastes good. the same, okay. <laughs> but you're right. Colors um, influence how we see yeah. food. And I think, I mean, I don't like gingerbread in general, but. <gasps> dum, dum, dum. <laughs> yeah, it's a fun fact. <laughs> I don't like gingerbread. So no, not only you can my have lips, all of them. Not only my <laughs> lips are broken, my heart is broken too. <laughs> but I love uh, vanilla kipfel. Um, what's the English word? Yeah, that's a good question. Let's ask the chat. What's a vanilla kipfel? Yeah. I'm yeah, sure. I'm sure. Favorites. I'm sure Anna has a has a hint here. Yeah, we have some Austrian support. I hear Tim typing. Yeah. He's looking for the answer <laughs> research, on the internet. Research. <laughs> hmm. 
So. Ähm. Brushes are a great way to create some um, or bring some elements to life or create some, um, yeah, to give them some highlights, shadows, um, and to give them, in this case, we want to give the gingerbread man a kind of baked feeling. <laughs> Is it called bake baking feeling? Yeah, like straight out of the oven. So, um... I will use maybe the pastel mixer. It's a really great brush, as you mentioned before. <laughs> yeah. So it's really looking a bit grainy. So Anna actually has the answer. It's and vanilla crescents. Oh. And she says Austrians would call it like that too. I'm not sure. No. Vanille Kipferl is vanille Kipferl. <laughs> vanille Kipferl. Kipferl. And she mm. had a conversation about is exactly those cookies last night. Because they are the best, right? <laughs> Yeah, and you have you, ha you actually have a, a huge group of people in the chat who also do not like gingerbread cookies. Yes, <sighs> that's so good. I'm a bit. I'm sad. Just sad. <laughs> Disappointed and sad. Disappointed and sad. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know why, but I don't really like them. Have I ever told you the story about? Sean and Bubbles? No. So I was dreaming with Tanya and I thought Sean... Oh, <laughs> I thought Sean... We, we just pronounced something completely wrong. You know, we're... We're German. Like uh, our native uh, language is German. And <laughs> we were on the UK stream and Sean just like dropped Bubbles. And I thought he was making fun of us because I pronounced bubbles in a really weird way but it's just really called bubbles so that <laughs> and i think sean is really happy now that i said bubbles five times what was the stream about do um, you remember good questions probably about patterns oh. yeah it was pattern a pattern stream or it was about uh, a record cover one of those two they were actually if you would ask me if they were about my favorite streams this year they would probably be amongst <laughs> my favorite streams do you have a, a one favorite, stream? favorite stream or a top top three um, top three, oh, it's really difficult. I have a couple that I really like and rewatched a couple of times because I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. Tim's uh, crash courses are always really good. <laughs> he's he, he's smirking now. <laughs> Compliments straight, straight over there. And Just trust me. <laughs> Since you're creating all those elements mm -hmm. on separate layers, mm -hmm. have you ever considered using those elements in Adobe Express? Yes, of course I did. It's such an easy way to create some nice festive postings for Instagram or stories or um, even create some uh, last minute Christmas cards. So um, Express is a nice way um, to make your life easier, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so we have one, one 
New Year's resolution for uh, to be illustrated, and now one for Express. Is that did I did I yeah interpret that correctly? Yep. Maybe we have some time left, and we can hop play. over to Express. Yeah. <gasps> that would be so cool. Otherwise, um, there's probably let me have a look. There's a really nice stream with Liz focusing on the creation of cards. Because Liz is an absolute Adobe Express pro. She knows everything about it. And she recently made a nice reel um, for Instagram um, where she showed how, how easy it is to use um, Express. Yeah. She, she produced her cards in Express, got them printed and I think this week she's sending it to pretty much everyone. It was a huge, a huge, um, a huge package with cards in there. I'm so in love with this brush. <laughs> oh my god. I mean. It's perfect, yeah. yeah. It suits your style really well. So nice. I love it. So <laughs> the chat is still focusing on cookies. <laughs> Speculatius uh, is what Sandrine suggests. Is this something you like? Yeah. These are great. Yeah, that's really good. And Sean wonders if if there's a stream where we can see Tim blush. I'm not sure, but you get the chance on... No, not on Wednesday, because... Oh! See? But there is probably one stream already out there, somewhere on YouTube of the hands, where you can see Tim, br uh, Tim, Tim brush, Tim blush. <laughs> I'm sure there is the one where you can see Tim Brush because <laughs> I was <laughs> I was on stream with him, but Plush uh, that's really hard. I mean, um, just to focus on the brushes uh, once again, um, it's a nice way to combine some structures to make it look more natural, I would say. So now I um, use three different brushes. The one from the fall collection, the granulate one, which is really awesome. I mean, it's really like this felt tip um, feeling. Then I used the pencil brush and the pastel mixer. And it's really, it's really nice. I really like about your style that you start with shapes and add details later on. So you're not starting with outlines or something, but you really color everything in first and then you add details. Which is, which is, I think, which defines your style. Yeah, that's true. But um, this is something that came up about two years ago <laughs> that I really um, yeah, got rid of all the outline work. So now I tend to really focus on the shape itself without putting it into a frame or outline. Is this something you would recommend um, illustrators who are just starting out to, to try and to really... Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Totally. So you would go for both styles and try which one suits better? I think some things um, don't need outlines. Um, but of course it depends on your style and what you want to create. But it's also a great way to, um, let's say, go wild a bit. Like to explore and to um, create your own unique visual language, I would say. Yeah. 
And that's actually an interesting question. Um, have you ever tried to create your own brushes? I did. Um, but it was a long time ago. Um, I think when I was a student, I made some brushes in Photoshop. Did you ever try Capture for creating brushes? Not really. I used uh, Capture to create some shapes and also to um, save them in my library to yeah, add them and to use them as some kind of brush. Um, but not a brush in a traditional way. But Capture is great. Um, I mean, it's really a nice uh, app and also you can do so many things <laughs> within this one app and it's such a lifesaver. And it really helps to create your color libraries or also to um, create some gradients. Yeah. I think for, for me it's the multicolor picker pick multicolor picture picker in fresco uh, that I really use a lot for creating yeah. new brushes. Yeah, it's also a great way to create some uh, unique or custom made <laughs> things. <sighs> Looks really Christmasy. Yeah. And shiny. Yeah. <laughs> totally. And because we talked about outlines, I mean, especially with this um, lights, I think it wouldn't make sense to put them into a shape or to um, create some outlines for them. So that's a good example to um, create your own kind of Mm, interpretation. Yeah. Although you could have a multicolor <laughs> <laughs> yes. bigger brush. That's true. Where you just Yeah, that's true. And then you could liquefy everything and go make crazy. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But yeah, we will see. Um what else do we have? Yes, we have some people in chat who always work with outlines and some who did create brushes already in Photoshop mm -hmm. and then imported them to mm -hmm. Fresco. I mean, it's a great way, but of course it depends on your style and what you want to create. I think this, the, the brush one uses defines the style. Because if you just use a vector brushes, you have a completely different style than using those textured ones. So it's important to test as many as possible. Yeah, that's true. Mm. But I think the... <sighs> it's tricky because I think the core elements or how you um, create things will always stay the same. Mm, Don't yeah. you think? <laughs> I'm not sure. I think it's That's a lot like about illustration deep talk. <laughs> uh, I think it's a lot about the interpretation uh, of an artwork yeah. and how you interpret it, what you make out of it, out of a brief. Yeah. Because, well, this card would look completely different if I would design it. Um, but I think the brush is, it's really, really important when it comes to defining a style. Yeah, that's true. The interpretation is maybe the first thing, but the second thing is already the brush. Everyone loves the tree you created. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> so maybe maybe this would be the, the main motive of the of the card. Yeah. Maybe we can put the tree uh front row. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot would be here, we could ask him how he would um, animate, animate the tree. The tree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can call him. <laughs> Hello, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> he 
Si, Robert keeps sending me links to lip palm. I would, I would, I would prefer <laughs> if he'd be here to give us some creative input. Yeah, but I think the tree is really super Christmassy. And I think I will also change the colors a bit down here. Go for the same green. Sean wants to add some glow. Where? <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere to the Everywhere. to the lights maybe. Mm -hmm. I was summoned. <laughs> 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 Welcome back, Robert. Good to see you. Hello. <laughs> Do you want to give some feedback on the artwork? I'm already animating a little bit uh, with the draft. That oh, you sent wow. Me. And I have a few ideas. I'm so coming, excited. Things are coming together. It's actually all good. Just Perfect. name the layers. That would be helpful. Yeah. Because I'm just playing I will do it. Hide and seek with what is what. <laughs> it's a very straightforward input. We have never had that on stream before. Usually everything is very um, very how, how do you say it? It's usually not connected, but getting feedback here is really nice. Yeah, it's interactive. It's like usually a live we do class. that in the background. <laughs> yeah. The call of the jingles. You uh, you ask for Rob, you get Rob. Yeah, that's the that's, uh, <laughs> yeah. the sound I'm here like. Yeah. Jingle bottle. Yeah, Sandrine. Sandrine has the perfect description. Thank you for that. Sandrine says it's like a hackathon, but for fresco. Yeah. And tomorrow we will hop over to After, After Effects. Effects. Yeah. I'm so excited about it, really. Because I think it's. When you create an illustration and then uh, it's going to be animated, it's it's like entering the next dimension. <laughs> and it's super fun and also super exciting to see. It will definitely like bring your uh, illustration to life. Mm -hmm. Static, I think static illustrations are cool and interesting to look at. But if I try to imagine this one, it's a sticker maybe, or have all the separate elements moving or if I can place them myself. It's so cool. And it gives them a second purpose. It's not just this yeah. one image, but you can really recombine it and relay out everything. Exactly. Karina, would you actually lay, name the layers in Fresco? Or is this something you would do in Photoshop? I think that's something that I would do in Photoshop later because I really like to um, see everything on another screen again. And also when I'm working at the studio I'm or at home, I try to use a second screen mm -hmm. too. So yeah, it's kind of a different feeling then. Makes sense. Yeah. And I will also zoom in and um, check everything and delete um, unnecessary things. And it's easier to type on a keyboard, or I'm That's still not true. used to typing on the iPad. That's true. Yeah, it's totally different. Magic keyboard for the win. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's really good. True, yeah. Yeah. When I check the draft, it's quite high res, but I will reduce it down, which is fine. Okay. Always better to have higher res and reduce it instead of scale it up. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, we talked about this before. It's better to create um, something big enough um, than having some something too small. Also, when it comes to animation, it's um, giving the people working after your work a hard time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Otherwise. <laughs> so... Which size and resolution did you go for for this initial artwork? I went for, uh, let me check, uh, 4,000 to 5,000 pixels with, um, I think, 300. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's always better to have the option to print it 
afterwards. That's yeah. uh, what I had in mind. So if we want to make a poster out of it or some printed goods, for example, or wrapping paper, or also if you want to use different elements um, like the Christmas tree and use it, I don't know, later on for some yeah, festive um, wrapping paper, then it makes sense to have it big enough. Definitely. Mm -hmm. It was one thing I was worried about when you finished the Christmas tree and everyone liked it so much that it's maybe not... The quality the is quality not, good is not good enough and the resolution is not good enough. But it sounds like you can scale this up. Yeah. And I think it, that's also something you always have to keep in mind, especially when you work in a team, that you really check the file requirements for everyone and... Yeah, I think that's super helpful because otherwise you maybe end up, um, yeah. If we have to reproduce yeah, it or and recreate it. Or it's not fun. Or, 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 <laughs> or you use Photoshop to bring back the high resolution. Yeah, but in s sometimes it's not the best way to do this. No, it's not the same. No, it isn't. To be honest, it's not the same. Yeah. <laughs> Sean wants animated wrapping paper. Yes, that would be lovely, but we're not, uh, we did not arrive at the Harry Potter status yet. <laughs> Where is this possible? Animated pictures, for example, animated paper. Oh, it would be so fun. Yeah. We're close, but not there yet. <laughs> and Sandrine mentioned that um, adding the, the reflections on the candy mm -hmm. really elevated it. Yeah. I think that's something, I mean, when you work on um, such a colorful piece, I always try to do some kind of color sketch before. Mm -hmm. And if this would be a real client project, then I would send this over before I work out the details um, because it saves a lot of time and it also um, proves for everyone that this works out in the end. So, but in this case with the candy, I made some, these are my kind of outlines because we talked about this before. Yeah. It's not really an outline, but it's some shape. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a way of adding light and shadows. Yeah. And of course, I would also do this um, for the ginger bread. Are those little details something you add at the very end usually? Or is this something you really add element by element? Mm, it depends. Um, sometimes I really try to um, add this when I'm working out a specific element. And sometimes it's better to add this at the very end. I mean, in this case, it makes sense to add it directly mm -hmm. uh, when working or while working on the elements because it will be animated in the end. And so I really have to make sure that everything has a separate layer. Um, if I do something um, where I can go completely wild, yeah. then I would do this at the very end. Yeah. But it, yeah, I mean, it, you always have to um, think about what you would like to create and what the things will be used for mm -hmm. and then try to um, shift your workflow in the right direction. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. I can picture myself getting really lost um, in adding those details. Really? Why? <laughs> it's fun. And... And then I would maybe not have the time to finish the whole design. So I would usually stick to adding details at the very end. Mm, yeah, but it's really like, it really depends on what you want to create. Because sometimes it makes no sense to work until the very end. Karina, we we're talking so much about illustration and animation. Did you ever animate in fresco? Yes. How does it feel? Good, but it takes a lot of time and you really have to 
have a plan mm -hmm. because it's a bit different than um, animating in uh, After Effects or also in Photoshop. So, but we can maybe I can show you some tiny animation. For example, can I, let me give you a time update. We have no. about 10 minutes left. So, <laughs> no, okay. It's not enough time to show some proper animation in Fresco, but um, of course you can do this down here um, with this small little um, animation icon. And then you have the option to do some frame by frame or path animation. So that may sound familiar. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then you can create, of course, if you want to do frame by frame animation, you have to create your frames. If you want to do some path animation, then of course you have to define your path. I love it. It's, yeah. it's, it's a great way. And it's so cool to prototype first animations. Exactly. That's really cool. It's a great feature. You could actually, in case you're interested in that, there are multiple streams um, available. I think we did it. Rob, did we do the Olympics one for the UK channel? That's a good question. I think we did. I think so too, yeah. Yes, I think so too. But there were a couple of, of nice uh, illustration plus fresco plus animation streams. Yeah, it's really a nice way to um, to maybe give someone else a first impression of how it would look like in the end. So, and I absolutely love the frame by frame animation. Although I never add enough frames, <laughs> and then it's too fast, and then I have to slow it down. But if I have a video and I want to slow it down, I can do that now with Adobe Express, which is pretty cool. It's super cool. And how much time do we have left? 10 minutes. Oh. Is it, are, are, are you crying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> crying on the inside. Uh, running out of time. So this envelope will be something that's animated tomorrow, right? Mm, yep. And it's supposed to open, open up and then the different elements will pop out. So or whatever Rob will create then in the end. <laughs> yeah. So you're again creating um, separate layers for exactly. all elements. Exactly. Just to give um, a rough uh, overview, I will, of course, um, place this in the right position, but um, if you work with someone else, it's very nice to have the whole shape and not just the tiny bits, um, which are, which you can see in the sketch, um, because then it gives the other person more space to inter yeah, to make their own interpretation and also to do a nice animation. Um, in my case, of course, I would uh, just erase some parts and yeah, for my illustration, it's not necessary to have the whole tree, but of course it is for the animation part. Of so. course. <laughs> and if you don't edit at the beginning, you will have to edit in a very tedious way later on. Yep, exactly. Or not at all, because you probably would recreate <laughs> it. So, five more minutes. What is the? What is the? What is the, What are we? What are we planning to finish? Because we have Christmas market plans this yep. afternoon. You can't. You can't <laughs> spend any extra hours on this. Why? No. Well, you can, then I will just go to the Christmas <laughs> market with Rob. No, I will be finished.
finished um, in no time. Whilst you finish this one, um, I will give another preview about this week um, because it's pretty cool. As you know, illustration today, animation tomorrow, it's about festive, festive greeting cards. Robert will join tomorrow um, and show how to animate this lovely uh, card Korean Karina just created. And on Wednesday, we have Joe Allen joining us again, who is in Japan right now, and he will talk about Japanese uh, traveling stamps. He will create some of them himself and maybe also animate this. So oh, nice. That's cool. Yes, it's going to be great. And I hope he can also share some some photos and videos he just took in Japan. Because everything I've seen on Instagram so far is just mind blowing. And maybe a, a sad thing. This is the last week um, of Adobe live streams. We will stream today, tomorrow, Wednesday and Friday. But then we take a little Christmas and holiday break. <laughs> More things. Um, we will take a little break, so um, seize the opportunity to watch as many Adobe live streams as you can this week, and then um, we will see you again next year uh, in January. But um, we have three more streams to go on this channel. We have, of course, also streams for German speakers and French speaking um, creatives. So just join us this week and make the most out of it. Otherwise, of course, you can watch all the replays, um, which are still available. <laughs> Sean actually said he went to every Christmas market in Munich last year. <laughs> so in case you have any recommendations for us, let us know. Um, then we might drop by there later. Otherwise, we depend on Rob's recommendation. <laughs> You will not finish. <sighs> Give up. No. <laughs> I will never give up. <laughs> You're really not stopping. No. Okay. <laughs> do I have to stop? Yes, you do, unfortunately, because no. we have to go. We don't have to go. <laughs> Tim is, uh, is holding signs up. Two more minutes, one more minute. Okay, cool. He actually says, go as long as you want, <sighs> which is very unusual because usually we have to stay, stick to a schedule. But since we're here in the studio, we can, we can do whatever we want. <laughs> it is crunch time. <laughs> yeah, crunch time. <laughs> it's a hackathon. We will stream until uh, Karina is done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Oliver says Karina will just carry on even if Behance cuts off the stream. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Tim, Tim is actually very quiet in the chat right now because he's trying to hack the system so we can stream <laughs> forever. Is this it? No? No? No. We can <laughs> stream forever. I can't interpret this gesture you just did. <laughs> crunch time on a crunch day no um, Emma also says we'll make sure Karina makes it home Karina yep any last words for this last um, stream of yours this year I had the best time being on Adobe Live and also it was quite a yeah, it was so exciting being here today with you, doing first the German stream, then the English stream now. And I can't wait to see whatever Robert will create tomorrow out of my illustration. I'm so excited. So am I. Um, this is going to be really cool. I love that it's not such a classical festive stream um, or festive colored uh, card. Uh, very excited about tomorrow. Thanks everyone for joining. Stick around for the rest of the week and enjoy the afternoon.
Thank you. And thank you, especially Karina. Thanks, everyone, in the chat. Um, I will get myself some lip balm now. I'm out of here. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>